Welcome everybody to another episode of Strife's Sanctum. My name is Citizen Strife and this week's episode is going to be a whole different tack altogether. I've done RPGs, I've done visual novels, I've done retro games here and there. I even did a horror game last week. However, or last time out. However, this time, I'm not going to be focusing on RPGs. I'm not going to be focusing on retro stuff. I'm going to be focusing on a little bit of everything. This is a topic I've had in mind for quite a while. Because, as I stated, I wasn't always an RPG fanatic. I started, like many people did, just getting stuff at a blockbuster back when those were a thing. Or just randomly finding stuff or hearing about stuff. Some of these games I haven't even heard of until way after the lifetime of the Super Nintendo. Some are not even in print anymore. So a lot of this, it was me going back down memory lane on YouTube and just watching footage. Some I've played over and over, some I haven't. But this is going to be a semi-recurring thing, you know, as go on with different consoles, but it's going to be known as the Super Nintendo Grab Bag. Um, I'm particularly thinking about doing three to four of these. The Super Nintendo, the Sega Genesis, Sony PlayStation, and maybe, maybe the N64. I'm not as familiar with the N64. I really played it mostly for Zelda and the WCW WWF wrestling games, but I could... To still find something in that if I need to, but I, I'd imagine a lot of those are going to be full episodes for like Mario and Zelda and stuff. The reasoning I'm doing it this way is because a lot of the games that I played in Super Nintendo don't really justify their own big deep dive, so a lot of these are just going to be short rapid fire bursts of things. If I really like something, I'll talk about it a little bit more in depth, but a lot of these games, and I've got about 15 of them here, I'm just going to rattle them off and I'm going to talk about them. And hopefully we have fun. Some of them I've played or some of them I like, some of them I absolutely detested even back when. But we'll start with a big one, and it's Super Metroid. Now, I will readily admit I am not the best Super Metroid player at all. <laughs> Most of my interest in Super Metroid has to do with the Super Metroid randomizers that exist, mostly in conjunction with the Legend of Zelda randomizers. But the game style has influenced stuff like Symphony of the Night and other games of that nature. The, uh, the level of exploration involved, especially with Super Metroid, is absolutely insane. There is no questioning what it did what it is, what it was able to accomplish, and what games have kind of wish they would still do. I, I think a lot of people still love the Prime games, but really what they want is Super Metroid. Uh, I, I know there was things like AM2R, uh, Return, the Return of Samus, the remake of 2, you know, but nothing has really recaptured Super Nintendo. I think Metroid Dread comes close, but then they have that stupid, unwinnable boss fight thing against those fucking creeper things. <laughs> you know, but to be fair, Super Metroid, while it's not my thing, I can still appreciate it from a design perspective. And a lot of the reason that I'm not really good at it is because my stupid hands cannot fathom the control scheme but what that control scheme does do is allow for a lot of crazy movement and speed and jumping and all sorts of crazy things that you know link and mario don't do a lot of platformers don't do samus in a freaking spacesuit shooting aliens so it's a mixture of a shooter and a platformer and an exploration game all in one so i can still despite not really being the game for me respect the level that it was able to achieve back in 1994. What a hell of a year for games, by the way. Final Fantasy VI was also released that year. Fucking great. Um, but, but yeah, I did want to mention Super Metroid. It, it's not a game I would review on its own because I'm just not as fond of it as, hey, Legend of Zelda, but I do reference it a lot because it is in randomizers and such. Maybe one day if I go and talk about randomizers or I do randomizers itself, it might pop up again. This one, I do know, Turtles in Time. 
Oh God, it feels so good to go back to this because I last time I played Turtles in Time was actually a couple of months ago. It was in my uh, I was down in Illinois visiting my family and we went to an arcade bar. Uh, think a bar with an arcade attached to it. You know, funny concept, I know. One of the arcade machines was Turtles in Time. For those unaware, it's the fourth game uh, in the TMNT franchise. I'm sure there was a lot of offshoots because, good God, that late 80s, early 90s period was all turtle mania. You know, before Power Rangers was a thing, it was, it was, it was Ninja Turtles everything. I watched the first three movies, Kind of wish I hadn't watched the last one, but, but that's beside the point. The first one was great. second one was fine. Ninja rap, you know, that one. Um, but yeah, first one is amazing. Definitely go fucking watch that if you haven't. But anyway, so I was heavily invested in the Turtles. Really, the only game I was able to get into was the fourth one. Um, because I wasn't really an NES guy. So just stuff like two and three. I wasn't even into arcades much because I, I was too young to afford to go to arcades. And, um, so stuff like console games were great. And I do distinctly remember the fourth game, Turtles in Time. It was very amazing looking. It had some sort of cool Battletoads areas like the sewer level without the whole jumping over pads thing, which was fuck, you know, but it was easy. It was an easy, cool beat em up. I know eventually I'm going to be talking about, um, Shredder's Revenge and the Calabunga Collection. I want to play those on my time because I don't play a lot of retro style beat em ups and things but those were those things that I enjoyed you know River City Girls I remember enjoying and thinking why didn't I play River City Ransom I'm dumb you know but those things are are ingrained in me Final Fight Streets of Rage Golden Axe I've played them not well but I remember enjoying them and loving them and Turtles in Time is one of those things that well without Turtles in Time being the thing I don't think we would have gotten Shredder's Revenge because that's exactly what they were going for when Shredder's Revenge came out let's see another good one one I don't think people bring up as much which is really unfortunate because it's really awesome is Rock and Roll Racing done by Blizzard Entertainment of all things though it was made by Interplay. I don't know if it was Blizzard themselves, but I think Blizzard went on to big things, but then they went up to be stupid. But anyway, I'm not going to get political. Um, this was back when they weren't dumb. Rock and Roll Racing was great. And the trick with Rock and Roll Racing is think of Road Rash, but with instead of motorcycles, you have muscle cars. And some of the muscle cars can even turn into like hovercrafts. Some have, like, super, like, triangle wings, like a fucking rocket engine or spaceship engine on a fucking car. You can drop oil slicks, t uh, spikes. You can throw in all sorts of, like, spy gadgets. You can throw out, like, homing missiles. All sorts of stuff to try and rock people off the road. But uh, all done. All done to Born to be Wild, Highway Star, Paranoid. You name it, like five or six songs rendered very well, whether you do the SNES version or the Genesis version. Uh, I was in the SNES version, and it was really good. It was my first in, in, uh, experience with those heavy metal songs that, you know, five or ten years later, I would be wholly invested in as a metalhead. But, but Rock and Roll Racing fits that niche of Road Rash, which I was also a fan of. I'll do that in my... Um, Sega Genesis grab bag. Again, it's just... Oh, it's so good. I remember... Oh, God, what was it? They had Olaf from the Lost Vikings as a as a character. You'd hop and planet hop to all these places. And then you'd have the announcer dude constantly say, He's getting a wipeout! Or, Fred! In another time zone! You know, th things like that. It was just ingrained in me. I didn't even have to watch footage of the game again. I have it in me. Because I played that so many times for like a year or two it was just like a game i loved and i hope people do go back and watch it um or play it i wish they'd have those kinds of games back i know road rash got a re-release or a you know a revival but you know doing stuff like that or breakout or you know just blowing shit up while you're racing it's pretty cool i had a um there's a mini game sort of like that in um yakuza like a dragon which is great so I mean, why not, right? Uh, let's take a trip down one of the shittier games on the list and get rid of Virtual Bart and Bart's Nightmare. 
I do not want to save that for last. It was last on my list, and I didn't want to save it for last. The Simpsons are great. Despite what anybody says about any of the recent stuff, you know, I've seen a few recent episodes here and there. I still think they have their place. But much like TMNT or Power Rangers, those 90s were dominated by The Simpsons. And I think The Simpsons arcade game has its place. I think Simpsons Hit and Run is considered really good. I bet The Simpsons have had a lot of shovelware. I did not play The Simpsons wrestling game because God forbid I wouldn't be that stupid or insane to want to risk that. But I did have the misfortune of playing two very, very, very bad Simpsons games. Virtual Bart and Bart's Nightmare. I I want to like them because I played them so much, but they're so bad. Some areas don't even have music. Some areas don't even... It's like a bunch of like interconnected weird shit. Like mini games they couldn't justify into actual games, so we'll slap Bart on it and we'll sell a copy or two, which I guess they did. I don't know. But you're you're running through Bart's Nightmare, you're collecting homework, and then you're doing... It. I think the worst part is like... There's no there's no input for what you're supposed to do until you see it. And then you're in, like, Maggie's fucking temple, and you keep making mistakes, and you have to redo it. And then you die and have to redo it again, and you have to die and redo it again. And then you play another one, and it's also shit. And the, you play another one, and it's also shit. Then you go down the one in Virtual Bart, which is a water slide, which is kind of fun because it only lasts, like, a minute. You know, it's just a bunch of weird fucking interconnected mini games that don't do shit. I mean, Bartman was, I guess, fine because it was just like the t- the Sonic Two uh, flying scene, but worse. But it was fine, I guess. But it still sucked. <laughs> so no, stick with the Simpsons arcade game. You will be fine. Virtual Bart and Bart's Nightmare are shovelware. It's awful. <sighs> oh, 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 oh dear. Uh, Bobsy. Bobsy, God fucking damn it. Um, oh, no. Um, what I remember most is he's fragile as fuck, and he doesn't shut the fuck up. But I think what frustrates me more about Bubsy isn't the fact that he's a fake, like, sonic ripoff. It's the fact that, like, they're trying to make him smug even more than Sonic is. Like, I remember... I saw... Bubsy, and it's fun to play him, but if you ever stop, like, if you ever stop in that game, he will do that fucking sassy fucking look to the camera. Not like, wait five seconds, and Sonic will tap his watch and say, get the fuck going. Uh, hello? You know, Bubsy, you stop for a second, he just mugs to the camera. It's fucking infuriating. They're trying to make him sassy and fucking, you know anarchic and whatever he's just a fucking putz what can possibly go wrong and the game like the bosses are all the same outside of a couple of fucking weird things it's just a fucking ball of yarn you're capturing balls of yarn and i think the problem was you tried to do the sonic one thing where the act three they had three specific acts then a boss fight sonic was smarter than he is stuck with two you know from then on, they were smart enough to cut out the second stage and just let let the third, you know, be the boss fight, basically. So two stages and boss. No. There's like five or six distinct stages and Bubsy, and they're kind of... I did like the carnival, but not much else, because a lot of it was just dumb. And then I think, I think oh God, the last part I remember was when you go down a water slide, and you know, it's just fucking... So let's, let's move on or something I did enjoy Earthworm Jim much better much better sense of humor totally less annoying groovy you know the fucking chicken that you blow up in the fucking thing the fish that's that's staring at you and you're angry so you just eat the fish or you throw the fish out of the fishbowl and the boss fight's over I uh, I didn't like the I didn't like the stage where you had to pilot the fucking fishbowl into the into the things while it was cracking. It reminded me of uh, uh, TMNT 1, but, you know, it, it was inventive. It was inventive using your your head as a whip to get yourself to new platforms, the weird sense of humor. Like I said, going, to, Whoa, in that fucking 
constant stage at the end, him whipping his thing, his head like a lasso while he's just running around. It's just fucking great, you know? So I still enjoy Earthworm Jim because unlike Bubsy, which feels like it's trying too hard, Earthworm Jim hits that happy medium where it's a joke and we're all in on it and we're having fun. Um, I, I even remember like the final stage of two was just this, just this like backdrop of grill. It's, it's like a grill with ha- like pictures of a hamburger and a hot dog on it. And you're going through a stage full of like spiky forks. I was just like, that's never been done before. Like going to princess. What's her name? And, um, what is it? Slug for a butt. It's just, there's so much good shit in this game and, and both are great. And I, and I'm glad earthworm Jim, at least getting to come back to a little extent. And it's not, you know, completely dead. Cause we need more earthworm Jim. We just do. Um, cool spot is another, I don't know if we need more of this. I, I wanted to enjoy it, but it's, it's like Earthworm Jim, kind of, but not as good. It's not as annoying as Bubsy, but not as good. I did love the 7-Up the stage. That's the thing I remember most. I, I just think um, a lot of the stages looked the same, and it had that Bubsy problem. A lot of the stages looked the same. So even though the music had that kind of cool beach vibe to it, and it was all product placement of, drink 7-Up, you'll enjoy it. I'm like, I'm a sprite guy, but I don't mind having up. But cool spot is there. I mean, it's fine, but it's it's shovelware. But it's not as bad as Bart's Nightmare, so it has that going for it. Let's get back to the good stuff. Uh, let's talk about um, Super Ghouls and Ghosts, and fuck my life, I played this and hated it. I, I I'm not a guy that does hard games. <laughs> why I played this back when I was a kid? I don't know. Do I play it now? No. Do I pass it when I see it in the SNES Classic? Yes. Because I'm... No. You can have your Ninja Gaidens and your Dark Souls and your Super Ghouls and Ghosts. Doesn't mean I won't try. (laughs) But I'll fail. (laughs) Oh my god. These games are just... Let's find a pit. Let's find a platform. Let's make sure Arthur can't jump very fucking far because... God forbid have any platforming. It's it's that old school difficulty that is it's just like, do you like the old Castlevania games? Do you like how they can't jump very far? Do you like how they get knocked back every second? Do you like getting fucked over by environmental hazards? This is the game for you. As tough as some of those Castlevania games can be, Super Ghouls and Ghosts just completely ran the farm. It was just like, nope. Nope, we're going to make you play this game over again, and we don't fucking care. Play it over again like a fucking scrub, because we want you to beat the actual ending. So yes, I've played Super Ghouls and Ghosts and Ghouls and Goblins, and I don't have fond memories of it. It looks nice, but that's about all I can say, because fuck my life. Um, So let's go on the easier track. So so let's let's go to the complete opposite direction and talk about Ma- Mickey's magical quest. Back to Happy Land where I don't have to suffer so much pain. Um I think it was Capcom that made like a series of Aladdin games. Uh I don't know if they made the link. I I could be wrong, but I know Disney partnered with I think Capcom or some other game, maybe Virgin Interactive, one of the two. But there was a series of games I thought it was Castle of Illusion, which I don't remember. I think it was for the Sega. That's probably why. The one I remember was Mickey's Magical Quest. It was just, hey, do you want a nice platformer? It's really stupid, but really like, hey, do you want to go through six stages for half an hour and play fun? Play it. You got your forest. You got your fire level. That was cool, going down to the fire level and the fire grotto and then fighting a fighting a weird... You know, some of the bosses are kind of inventive. The problem is there's like no real input. You know, so it really feels like you're not doing damage, but you kind of are. Like, the sound effects are kind of, you know, because you're throwing apples and magic and whatever at the fucking enemy. And it's like, eh, it's fine. Or is it tomatoes? I, I'm confusing it for Aladdin. You, I, I, I'm getting confused. But Mickey's Magical Quest was something I enjoyed because it was there. And, I mean, Disney's Disney, so it's fine. It's not going to win any awards. I would still play Aladdin or Lion King over that, but... 
it was fine. And I could actually beat it, so that helps. Um, let's do... Let's do some sports games. Three in particular. Tecmo Super Bowl. Loved it. Unlike every other game that was released, it was a that was like on the view. Like you see Madden now, it's like back of the quarterback into the offensive field. This was top down, like you're watching from a fucking blimp from the side. And what I remember most about Tecmo Super Bowl and the original uh, for the NES was say you get a giant sack or something there would be a there would be a bumper screen with a with a cool visual of like Reggie White got the sack you know and it's like you know hey, I touched down you know that it, it was cool it was also cool like if you got the right play like you'd break through immediately and the game would just speed the fuck up and you'd just get like a sack or you'd get the good play and then, then your guys would be just shooting off to the sidelines and you'd fucking score so it's not the most intensive sports game, but it has its place. Uh, I was also big into hockey and still am. I played NHL 96 or 95, 95 or 96, but I think 94 is the one people enjoy. So I wanted to kind of lump them together. They still had the same engine pretty much. Um, I did not know shit about hockey, but I love this game. I, I wish I could go back now. Like, I wish this was on the SNES Classic. Um, but I know that they've re-released 94 or 96 on um, some of the EA games, you know, because they have the license. My whole thing, which was super dumb, but bear with it, was to turn off offsides, which is the, like, you can't have the puck or you can't be in the offensive zone while the other puck is in the out, like the puck is on the outside of the zone. So it's like, say it's on your side of the goal and you are near the goalie, right? The opposite side of the ice. You can't do that, you know, or you can't speed through the, basically turn that shit off, turn off penalties and just ram the fucking goaltender. I found out that if you do that from the bottom, like you go towards the bottom, it'll squeak through every single time. It was a weird glitch that I found, and I was like, oh, well, I can win. I can just win doing that because I'm dumb and don't know how to play hockey, whatever. And then there's NBA Jam because it's NBA Jam, right? Everybody's probably played NBA Jam or heard of NBA Jam, and I fucking loved it. For some reason, I played as the Bulls and the Hornets. I, I have no real reason why. It's just like the Hornets and the and the Bulls. Well, the Bulls was obvious. It's Michael Jordan, Scottie Pippen, of course. I think they also had Horace Grant at the time in the game because they only had like three different players. But the level of customization for like cheat codes and shit, like big head mode or he's on fire. I think you could do one where like you could play as Bill and Hillary Clinton of all things. So that shows how dated this game is. But it's like it's weird shit. And it's not meant to be taken seriously. You get on a on a run, and then the football or the basketball gets set on fire, and the guy goes, "He's on fire," you know, or boom shakalaka, and then he's just you know rubbing his arms and just doing that shit, and it's just like, God damn it, they don't make games like that anymore. Or if they do, like they monetize it and they put it behind a paywall or something dumb. I don't know. Those games are are amazing because they're not meant to be taken seriously as a simulation. They're meant to be just jokes and to have fun, you know, and you miss that when you're doing the new games now. Um, let's go into Maximum Carnage. I really like this game. I really like it a lot. So Maximum Carnage is a uh, beat-em-up starring Spider-Man and Venom. Because I remember when Venom was a thing before Tobey Maguire did that dance in Super Mario... Uh, uh, Spider-Man 3. Why did I say Super Mario? Um, but Venom now has a new lease on life because of the Tom Hardy movies. But back then, Venom was the thing. Venom was the shit. And it was based on the 94 cartoon. And if I ever do talk about the 90s cartoons that I watched as a kid, Spider-Man's going to be up there. Is it to the same sophisticated level as Gargoyles or X-Men? No, but it has its place. And I remember just loving that cartoon. So the fact that... Um, a lot of the games of the time were based in that, you know, 90s era comic book look, you know, Arcade's Revenge, bleh, I'm not going to talk about it, but it's kind of crap. Um, <laughs> but 
Maximum Carnage and sep- well, Separation Anxiety to a lesser extent. Maximum Carnage, what really set it apart was the music. Um, a lot of the gameplay is the same, whether you play Separation Anxiety or Carnage, but what really set Maximum Carnage apart was the music. They got a, a grunge band known as Green Jelly, and they did like a cover of fucking Mob Rules as the boss music. They had really heavy fucking stuff for the time for an SNES game. So it's like, as a metalhead, I was just like, yeah, I want this. And then they replaced it with some very generic bullshit. Because I played Separation Anxiety more, which was dumb, right? But that was the game I had because it was later in the life cycle. But Maximum Carnage, that one. That one, yeah. So yeah. I mean, there are other good Spider-Man games. I remember Spider-Man 1 for the uh, PlayStation 1 was pretty cool. Uh, Spider-Man 2. I'm sure the Spider-Man for the PS4 games really fucking good too. But, you know, I'm so invested in RPGs now. I The most I would do with Spider-Man now is just watch footage or watch the movies. But Maximum Carnage was A-OK in my book. Um, Blackthorn. Okay, that one was a good one. Um, if anybody remembers Prince of Persia. So Prince of Persia, weird kind of platforming. It's it's realistic platforming. The the way they designed it was they photo opt or photo captured um a a a kid uh it was like a brother or something like ten or fifteen years old jumping and uh you know climbing and whatever around is around their home and then they they superimposed it into like the Prince of Persia the block puzzles and levels and sand shit. They use that kind of thing in a couple other games. I think, I don't remember if Bionic Commando specifically was that same style. I want to say it was. Because you, you'll you know it when you see it because of the animation style. It is totally the same as Prince of Persia. It's not like really floaty platforming. It is like, I can't reach the ledge. I'm dead. You know, but then you reach the ledge and then you climb up and then you, you know, you'll know it when you see it. But I remember Blackthorn. Um, Blackthorn was cool. Because of a short game, took about 45 minutes to an hour. It was, again, made by Blizzard Entertainment. God, they were good back then. I wonder what happened to them. Anyway, um, Blackthorn's some dude from the few, from the modern day, this cool biker-looking guy. He gets transported to his old home world, which is this alien planet where humans are enslaved. And he brings a gun. He brings a fucking shotgun. So you go through these puzzles where you beat up these orcs and you have this like stealth mechanic where you fade back into the shadows and then you pop out and you do damage. So you're not running and gunning. You're using bullets, you know, like two or three shots to kill guys. And you're trying to save people. There's like traitors amongst the mist. There's these weird spider bomb things. You got to use keys, bombs, ladder things. But the coolest thing is you got a gun. Did I mention you have a shotgun? That you can shoot people from behind with if you want to. You can cock your shotgun and shoot from behind. So you got four levels, one giant boss at the end, and there's a big old fucking puzzle. And I enjoyed it. I, again, a lot of these games I wish were still on the SNES Classic, but what can you do? Blackthorn was great. Let's see. A couple more. Do, 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 do. Aha! We've got Super Caesar's Palace and Vegas Stakes. So, this one's pretty quick. I like casino games. I, I'm not really into gambling and casinos in general, but I like the allure and the and the, the pomp and circumstance of casinos. Um, so, so, I like casino games because I'm not actually spending money, you know, except for buying the game. The two I remember playing way back was Super Caesar's Palace, and Vegas Stakes. Of the two, I would say Vegas Stakes. I think Super Caesar's Palace is just very basic and works and it's fine. It's got every game you would think. It's even got scratch tickets, which is cool for the time. Um, you know, everything just works and is serviceable. It's fine. Um, and in a lesser extent, Vegas Stakes is suitable. It's got blackjack and slots and seven card stud and all that sort of shit. What sets it apart are different looking environments. So they have five different stages. They all have the same basic games and the basic look, but the but the music and sound design are all different. You got one that's based in 2020, which is all futuristic shit, like Blade Runner shit. 
uh, cyberpunk. You've got the old west. You've got a uh, sophisticated high end casino. You know, it does change the it does change the the dynamic a little bit. Another thing that changes the dynamic is that there's a little bit of a role play in Vegas Stakes, where your characters themselves are actually with a party and a group of friends, and your goal is, I think, to make $10 million, which near the later stage of the game is a lot easier to do, but you get talked into things like making more money or losing money, like getting pickpocketed as the games progress, um, so it's not a major role play, you know, it's not gonna replace role-playing games for instance but it's enough to at least give you something else to do other than play the gambling stuff so i like vegas stakes more than caesar's palace but i think caesar's palace is suitable and fine let's see here we've got a couple more and let's see did earthworm jim did cool spot cool days ah this is going to be a strange one uh king arthur and the knights of justice uh, this was a, I, this was in a time, and I and I think it's still a thing, but not nearly as much. Video games were all about licensing, and licensing stuff from TV shows and cartoons to make a quick buck. I liked this game though. Um, I I rewatching the footage, I I think it loses a lot of luster later on because you're kind of doing the same things over and over, and a lot of the bosses are kind of basic and boring. You know, but if you want kind of an explorative RPG, like, uh, not say, not say Zelda, right, but, you know, kind of a mixture of East, but with some puzzle mechanics and go fetch quest kind of thing, it's doable. It's kind of difficult, though. It's got a lot of, like, weird teleporty bullshit, and you gotta go scour the thing and find the thing. A lot of the, a lot of the characters are fairly similar and they're just palette swaps and the AI is really stupid and dumb and gets caught in things but I still have a soft spot for it it's very colorful despite being a medieval setting like the characters all have cool looking gear um the the visuals do kind of fit the cartoon show quite a bit the idea is this football team gets transported to Camelot to rescue king arthur and his knights so they just take up the mantle and they beat the shit out of out of a witch and some dragons and some shit and, and, and that's fine I, I i didn't hate it it's not perfect but it's still it's got some good music here and there um i i found it a nice you know two to three hour exploration based rpg and it was kind of neat and cool that being said i did want to save one for last and this was the one I wanted to get to more than anything else. This was a game that I think got the short end of the stick and did not did not get a lot of publicity, which sucks. It's called Evo. E-V-O. The Search for Eden. And I only played it way back um, via, I'd say, emulation about five or ten years ago because I didn't even know this thing was... An, I didn't even know this thing existed. But it apparently was an NX game or some other other license. But it, it sure went under the radar. And I really hate the fact that it did. Because it has some cool ideas. It's not perfect gameplay wise. But I think it's a, a unique premise. So the basic idea is think of those edutainment games. Where you learn stuff. And you get told stuff in the guise of these characters. you know, But not in the shovelware sense. You know, not in the, oh god, this is for schools and whatever. This is, like, edutainment, but it's an actual game. Like, all the characters will, like, tell you about evolution and theories of evolution. And, like, some of the bosses will be like, you can't stop me! I'm the highest end evolution of this era! You know, so you go through, like, five or six different eras of these, like, five or ten mini-stages per level. And the idea is that you are evolving from a fish to a bigger fish to a big shark, to a bigger fish, do you get on land and you become a turtle or a reptile or a thing or a dinosaur or whatever, and you keep evolving and evolving and evolving, then you become a fucking sky dragon if you want. You can become a human if you want. You can attach different parts. You can evolve different parts of your body to look like different things. Certainly there are better um, versions than others, but if you want to stay as a bird-like person, you can. The idea is you are trying to evolve. 
by eating or stabbing, mostly eating, other life forms to gain their experience and then evolve from that. And then eventually you'll fight these bosses, which do not fuck around at all. But you keep evolving, you keep evolving, you keep learning about these little things. You get to see the dinosaurs uh, dying out in one of the levels. You get an ice level. You know, an Ice Age kind of thing. You you slowly start to see the prehistoric world forming. All the while, you're attempting to become the mate of the planet. You're trying to become the absolute best evolution so that you can essentially rule the world with the mother goddess Eden. And, and Gaia. Gaia is the name of the character. Eden is where you want to go. Got that. So Gaia has been tasked by the sun to find a mate. And you're trying to do that. All the while, you're trying to avoid getting eaten and killed and stabbed by bees and sharks and all sorts of stuff. It is amazing. It's a sort of concept that I think gets explored in stuff like Spore and whatever, but more from a, a like civilization, populist kind of thing. This is more of an action platformer kind of thing. The platforming is not the best. You know, the, the actual combat can be a little sticky at times and a little frustrating, but I think the concept alone stands apart. I've never seen any game like this. I've never played a game like this, and I don't think I've played a game like it since. There might be some here and there, but I don't think anything's been that expansive with its evolution ideas. And this was back in the early 90s. That's what's scary. And if it's even better, the guy who composed this music was the guy who composed stuff for Dragon Quest. So it's got that really cool, catchy stuff. It's not always the best music, but it's always endearingly catchy. So if anything else of all of these games, I mean, you've got your standouts like Turtles and Time and Super Metroid and whatever, but I did want to throw out a, a game like Evo, which I don't think gets a lot of publicity at all. But I think whether you you know, play it for yourself or find a way to do it, you know, old school access to RPGs and whatever, or whatever, whatever method you find, even if you just watch the footage on YouTube, I highly suggest Evo. That was one of the ones I wanted to get to. And again, is this super intricate? Am I being super in depth? No, but I, I think it's, it's good to remember what the stuff you played was because just because I'm an RPG guy now doesn't mean I always was. And there's still some fondness to be had in those old school games. Um, so again, I wanted to talk a little about those and have fun while I could. But that'll do it for me. And again, we'll do more of this kind of stuff later. And we'll do Sega next at some point. But we'll talk about that some other day. But let me get my list of... Uh, here we go. Here's our schedule going forward. I have it on my Discord now, so I don't forget it while I'm trying to do a thing. So, we've got... We've done that. We're next week. We're doing Spice and Wolf. I'm so happy I want to do Spice and Wolf. But I don't want to record twice in one week. Um, after that is I, the Somnium Files. I will specifically stick with one. I will not try to do both at the same time, because that would be a little extreme. After that... November 28th will be Death Parade, another awesome show I'm glad I rewatched. Uh, in the game side, Star Ocean 3. <sighs> I like it, but I hate it. So I'll play both sides. Just like Kingdom Hearts, I like it, but I hate it. So we'll see what happens when I actually review it. After that, something I really did enjoy, Shadow's House. Season 2. I talked about Shadow's House before, and I felt like I didn't get what I wanted out of Shadow House 1. This turned it around in a big way, mostly because it focused on the darker, more dystopic effects of the Shadow's House. So if you haven't seen the review to the first one, that's about 10 or 15 episodes ago. I would definitely watch the first season and then get into the second season post-haste because it is a much better season. Some people like the goofier aspects of Shadow's House. I like the darker shit, the more gothic and depressing stuff, and focusing on a character that you know emphasized that sort of thing. So I'll talk about that um, later going on into December. But that will do it for me, and I'll see you guys next time. Citizens Drive, signing off.